Awesome. I will live. Welcome back to this session, folks. And this one's slightly different from the ones that we do usually. Um, for folks who have joined us earlier, um, do put out in the chat section. I know it's a Friday evening in India. Hope everyone's been able to finish their office work, their college work, and joined us in here. Uh, thanks so much for the emojis that we're seeing on screen. I know you all are excited as well as we are. Um, the agenda for today is we will be talking a little bit about the community for folks who've joined in newly. This is an open session. So we will be sharing a little bit about um, the product folks in general, a little bit about a program that we're running today. It's called the Insurgio program. Um, this is a workshop series we've started and I'll also share with you why we've started this. Um, some of y'all might already know, I think for folks who've joined the Insurgio program know why it's important. Um, then we'll jump right into our session today. Uh, we have Sebastian from Glide. We will be talking a little bit more about Glide a little bit as Sebastian. We'll be talking a little bit more about his profile and we'll be jumping right into the workshop. Um, this workshop will be approximately for 45 minutes to one hour. Can extend if you will want, uh, but usual, usually it, it takes about an hour. And you will be working, uh, building something hands-on. So Sebastian will be probably demoing uh, on one idea, but at the same time, even um, you will be working on your uh, ideas on the side. And we, as usual, have like a small incentive, small giveaway for the winner. So we will be announcing that as well. Um, just before we start, um, small announcement for the winner last time. I think uh, for the notes that you all had put out in the previous session, um, the LinkedIn premium giveaway goes out to Mansi. She had like a lovely set of notes. Um, she goes by the handle Notwali on Twitter. So do check that out. We'll, we'll add the link to the chat section. But Mansi, thanks for the effort and congrats. Uh, we will have more of these LinkedIn premium giveaways to come through. So stay tuned, hopefully one from this session. Um, without further ado, getting started. Um, welcoming my co-host for this session, Akash, if you would want to share a line about, you know, just about your journey with TPF and what you do. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Suhas. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, so I basically, uh, you know, joined TPF a couple of years back where we started the Chennai chapter and uh, started off with, uh, you know, product management talks as such, then uh, it will, then we did a lot of uh, founder stories, essentially getting a lot of founders to speak how exactly they went from zero to an X number as such. And, uh, you know, today we uh, are trying to do the no code series here as such, right? Uh, personally, apart from TPF, I work at uh, ChargeP as product manager. But yeah, super excited to be here today. Awesome. Thanks for putting this together, Akash, and uh, welcome. Um, yeah. Very quickly, sharing a little bit about the community. We're a volunteer-driven community in the product space called the Product Folks. Um, been around for a little over two years, done a bunch of events to get started. We were offline only, then moved online, and ever since done a bunch of um, um, events to help grow the product community. Um, currently running a program called Insurgio. It is essentially a live learning experience. Yes, live. <laughs> And um, we are uh, trying to help people upskill in the space of product. And we've got probably the best mentors uh, from the Indian product ecosystem to deliver live lectures. Along with that, we have assignments, assessments, group peer reviews, tavern sessions, the fun ones, and lots more. So do join the program. I think registrations for the first one are closed. But everyone who's joined and hope you're having fun. Um, this workshop series is something that we thought initially so that you get more hands-on experience. And the first one is with Glide. The reason we partnered with Glide to bring this to you is we feel like um, uh, it has, our, I mean, probably Sebastian will share more about it, but in our experience, we feel that it has uh, the lowest learning curve and you can still build really, really powerful applications. Mm -hmm. And just to give an idea, um, during the COVID time, the product folks um, used Glide as a tool to quickly ship out something that reached more than 4 million people. And this was done overnight, right? Uh, shout out to Kavir if you're tuned into this. If not, shout out to you for building this. And then he had a whole team helping him. But it is pretty simple. So if you have ideas already that you're working on that you can implement with Glide, go for it. If not, I think um, uh, Sebastian might share. You might get some you know, ideas in, in the next hour or in the coming day. Do try it out. Um, Akash, is it okay I share about the contest right now or would you want me to share it later? Oh, yeah. Awesome. So folks, towards the end of this session, uh, as you're working on your ideas and Sebastian will walk you through um, the workshop, 
we have a small giveaway again. Uh, this one's another premium uh, LinkedIn to give away because we feel that will help most of the aspirants. Um, this is a six month one. The contest for today is you are working on your ideas, whether it is related to the PRD or not, it can be either way, but uh, you can ship really, really fast with Glide. So you have three days, work on your ideas and put it out there. Do tag the product folks and Sebastian or Clyde with the hashtag. We'll add the hashtag to the chat section. And the one that Sebastian picks as the, his favorite will get the LinkedIn premium giveaway. So hope that's simple. If you have any doubts, I'll take it from the chat section. We're not holding this off any further. Over to you, Akash. Over to you, Sebastian. Thanks once again for doing this. And everyone else who joined, hope this is a great, great learning session for you. See you on the other side. Perfect. Uh, thank you so much, Suhas. Uh, so just wanted to quickly introduce uh, Sebastian. I know that you know all of you are waiting for the actual session. So I'll quickly introduce Sebastian and hand it over to him. Sebastian is uh, currently in Peru. Uh, he is uh, working with uh, Glide as a product marketer. Uh, interesting thing is that he was an engineer before and then he essentially switched streams, uh, specialized in digital marketing in social media as such. And uh, now he's a product marketer with Clyde. He's done a lot of workshops and uh, one of those workshops essentially is the one that he did with the on deck as such, right? Which is essentially a very big space in the no code space um, as such. So uh, without further ado, um, yeah, I will hand it over to Sebastian. Please feel free to take it over from here, Sebastian, and be excited about this workshop. No, thank you guys for having me here. Hello, everyone. My name is Sebastian Salari, and welcome to this workshop. Today, we are going to learn how to build powerful apps with Glide. So first, to begin, I'm going to share my screen to um, share the presentation with you. OK, let's wait a little bit. I think it's OK. Uh, are you able to see my screen right now? Yeah, yes, yes, we can see yep. your screen. OK, awesome. So in this workshop, I'm going to show you an overview to Glide and the basics you need to know to start building apps. First, I'm going to tell you about Glide and our mission. And then I'll show you the basics. Uh, we are going to go through the templates work. And lastly, we're going to build an app from scratch. So a quick introduction. Probably some of you already know how to use Glide before, but in case you don't know about it, Glide is the best way to create beautiful and useful apps without code. Our mission is to empower a billion people to create their own and beautiful software. We want to achieve this goal by 2030. And to do this, I will tell you more about our approach. So I like to visualize world software as an iceberg. The top of the iceberg is like public software that you can find in app stores or the internet. However, as we all know, the majority of the iceberg lies under the water. This represents power software using um, within companies as such as uh, internal tools to optimize their processes, or they are also often called dark apps. So we want to make it easier for businesses to create apps and make everyone in your team a developer. OK, let's start with the cool part, shall we? So I'll start making a tour around Glide. And the first thing we need to do is go to glideapps.com. Once we are here, we can sign up in case we don't have a, a, an account yet. But in this case, I have one, so I'm going to log in. OK, awesome. Uh, so the first thing that we are going to see when we logged in is the Glide dashboard. This is the Glide dashboard. This is the place where you can access all of your apps and Teams, as you can see here. Glide, dash, uh, the Glide apps are organized by Teams. Each team is full of collaboration tools and features, so you can build apps together with your colleagues and, and yeah, can create a beautiful software together. So now, now let's open an app and see how the building experience looks like. To open an app, just click on it. OK, cool. So this is the Glide Builder. The Glide Builder has three main parts, the data editor, the layout editor, and actions. I'm going to go through each one of them on this first part of the workshop. 
to start the basics and to like work around this um, this part of the product. Okay, let's start with the data editor. The data editor is the place where you can access, manage, and edit all of your data. Glide is a data-driven product. So this is a fundamental part of it. So let's pay attention to this part, please. In Glide, you can create apps from spreadsheets because, well, spreadsheets are the most, the most popular tool for data management. So if you already know how to use the spreadsheets, you're definitely going to know how to use Glide. Initially, you were able to create Glide apps using Google Sheets, but now we added another data source called Glide Tables. Glide Tables is our own data source. These are faster and more scalable than Google Sheets. So you can share them between apps and create powerful multi-app scenarios. And the best part is that Glide Tables is an open source project. So you can find it in our website if you want to learn more. We will add, obviously, more data sources in the future, such as Microsoft Excel, Airtable, MySQL. So please stay tuned for the upcoming updates. Now, let's take a look at the data editor itself. In order to access the data editor, we need to click on the icon right here at the top of the builder, and we will access the data editor. In the data editor, we can see all of the tables that we connect uh, with our app. We can add rows, columns, and we can even add glide tables from here just by clicking this button right here and add glide table. Is that easy? I'm going to show you in more detail how to use the data editor at the end of the workshop when we are going to build an app together. Now, Let's talk a little bit about the layout editor. The layout editor is the place where you can change how your app looks like. Here, you can add uh, components such as buttons, images, text, list, and etc. We can add, uh, we can personalize how our app looks like. We can also change the layout of the screen of our apps. We offer different kinds of layouts, such as list, calendar views, map layouts, and so on. One of the best parts of Glide Apps that is really magical is that they have a responsive design. Glide Apps adapt automatically to different types of screens, so no matter which device you are using, they will always look great. And you can see how they look like while editing your app. I'm going to show you real quick how to use the layout editor. To use the layout editor, we click on the button at the top uh, of the builder, this uh, button of the center, and we will access the data editor. On the left of the screen, we can personalize uh, the type of screen we want to use. And on the right, we can see the options. For example, I can change how my app will look like with just one click. We can change from a map layout to a swipe layout. We can use tiles. We can use lists. We can use even a checklist. So as you can see, Glad is really easy to use. And changing the way your app looks, it's really, it's really fast. We can even preview how our app looks like in different devices just by clicking this arrow right here. And we can preview our app in tablet mode, for example. And we can switch between Android and Apple devices, just like that. Now, let's talk about actions, the, thing, the third uh, main part of our product. We don't want you just to help you visualize your data in a better way by using apps. We want to let you use it. In Glide, you can create multi-step actions, for example, you can set up an action that when pressing a button, it will play a sound, add a row to your table, and then take you to another screen. You can also connect your app using uh, with other tools using Zapier, for example, Integromat, and Webhooks, and it will make your app even more powerful. Now, I will show you how to create an action. To create an action, let's begin by adding a button in the layout editor. Now, 
on the right side of the screen, we can see uh, the actions menu. We click on here and let's create a new action. Let's give this action a name. And here we can set the steps of our action. For example, I'll make an action that when pressing a button, it will show a notification saying, hello world. And then play a sound. Let's set the action. And let's test this out. Just like that. Awesome. So we already did a tour of essential parts of the Glide Builder. Now I will show you the easiest ways to create one of the easiest ways to start creating apps with Glide. And that is by using templates. Now we have our own template store full of hundreds of templates made by Glide or our community. And most of them are available for free. Our goal, as I mentioned before, is to help businesses to create powerful apps together. So I want to talk more about the templates we made for them. We work directly with our customers in order to create a professional suite of templates made for the workplace. We call this Apps for Work. Apps for Work are a suite uh, of professional uh, templates used for, for the workplace, as I mentioned before. And this includes the most popular use cases for Glide apps. And they have even more features than the standard ones. So you can copy any of these templates and start a 14 days uh, free trial to experience Glide Pro and what we have to offer. We will add more of these templates in the future. So please stay tuned to new updates. Now, I would like to show you real quick how easy it is to copy a template for our template store. So to do that, let's go to our website and let's click on templates. Here we can search for uh, templates by category or we can click on here to go to the template uh, apps for work landing page and choose one of the beautiful templates that we made. But let's search all the templates to have a more wider overview of those. So let's say I would like this app. I would like to copy this app. So I click on this, then click, click on copy app for free. We will wait a couple of minutes until it loads. Okay, there it is. We assign an owner. It could be us or one of our teams that we have created in from our Glide dashboard. Let's click on copy. And that's it, it's that easy. When we copy a Glide a template, we receive a copy of the app and a copy of the spreadsheet as well. It's really easy and the templates are fully customizable so we can change the way they look, we can upload our own logos, we can add our own features and this is just a placeholder for you. So you can change it the way you like. Okay, great. Uh, this was the first part of the workshop. Uh, we went through the basics of Glide. How is, this, is the structure, how it works. Now let's get started with the fun part. Unless there is any questions from, from this? Yep. Um, Akash, Sebastian, we have a couple of questions. Just before you get started, I think I'll take one or two questions. Is that okay, Akash? <clears throat> yeah, please, please. Awesome. Uh, so, Sebastian, a couple of questions around... Um, um, let me even check this by the number of upvotes. So I'll take the one right on top. So, when folks are creating applications using no code, um, who owns the underlying code? Is it the end? developer or is it the platform, the underlying code? Do you, all, do you all allow them to export the underlying code? No, they are not allowed to export the code itself. They can share their apps by sharing a link. Apps, uh, Glide apps live on the web. 
and they are basically progressive web apps so they can uh, be used in any device but right now we don't off offer like exporting the, the code itself of the apps got it got it thanks for that um, another question that rohit asked is um, no code definitely helps you speed up your development but for processes um, for example if you're building an app with code a similar idea right you're building it with code versus no code um, what is the reduction or the increase in costs that you see uh, do you see no code to be more expensive than when you're building with code in your experience so far um yeah let me uh, think how to answer that question uh in an accurate way so yeah one thing i would like to make clear is that we do not want to replace the traditional coding or the traditional way to develop software we want to let people to help people and empower people to create their own software even if they are not uh, developers. So in terms of, of pricing, I will say that when you build a software, you need to uh, design skills, you need to know how to code, and many other things. So you will need a whole team for to do that, right? So with Glide on these kind of tools, you can create an app for yourself, and the maintenance of those systems are automatic, because we do that for you. We update your app to look to everyone, uh, to every, always look great. Um, we update the, the apps with new features, we have security improvements and all of that stuff that could take you more time and may, maybe could take you, uh, could take more resources. So uh, this, I think that's the more accurate way to, to answer that question. We are not giving the, the traditional coding, yeah. Got it, got it, thanks for that. Sebastian, probably the last question that I'll take here and we can take the rest towards the end of the session. Um, this one's on scalability. So are no-code platforms or, you know, just to talk about the limitations, right? Is it just to build an MVP or have you seen, we've used something at scale while we were doing, you know, the COVID relief efforts, but what is your take on how do you scale the, data, the database, the server standpoint? Um, you know, how does that work? Do you see platforms using Glide or other no-code tools while scaling scaling up applications? Yeah, that's a really good question. Uh, actually, with Glide, you can create powerful and useful apps, not just an MVP. You can use uh, create actual apps that you use every day. In terms of scalability right now, um, we added another data source, as I mentioned before, that is called Glide Tables. Glide Tables has uh, more capabilities than Google Sheets. It is more scalable, so it can support even more rows than um, Google Sheets. And we are working right now on adding more data sources as MySQL and help businesses scale their internal tools and apps uh, in order they they grow. Got it, got it. Thanks so much for that. We have a couple of more questions flowing in, but we'll take that towards the end. Um, I think everyone's waiting for the workshop to get started. Just before we jump in, I put out a quick poll for the contest that we're running. And they have some hashtag ideas. So I'll just pull that up on stage. Um, thank you for everyone who's voted. And if you haven't, please do put it on the poll. You have 10 seconds to go. Looks like the winner is Let's Glide with TPF. That is very innovative. I don't think I would have come up with that. So thank you. Uh, to whoever suggested that I'll probably pick that out of the chat set. Okay, no, no, I think we might just have, okay, I think we might just have turned the tables. I think Glide with TPF is what wins. Okay, it's gonna be tight, so I'm just holding on for another 10 seconds. Okay, I think we have a winner here. Glide with TPF is what wins. We stopped the voting now, thanks so much, folks. I think we've got our answer. Sebastian, over to you. Let's get started on this. Okay, okay. Let's start with this part of the of the workshop then. Um, yeah, I'm gonna show you how to build an app, a Glide app from scratch. We already uh, create an app from a template, but right now we are going to build an app from scratch. So in order to begin, I have, oh, excuse me. I have to access real quick to my Google Drive in order to share you. Um, My apologies. 
in order to share you the placeholder sheet that I have in order for you to uh, follow me through this workshop. I'm gonna share this link in the, in the chat so everyone can have access to this. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so I have this Google Sheet file that is a, like a placeholder for uh, the app that I'm gonna build. Since we are on a workshop right now, in a workshop right now, I'm gonna create a conference app or a workshop app where users can follow up the sessions, can uh, view the calendar, view all the details of the sessions and can add their favorite ones and save the favorite ones for, for later. Is if that is cool for you, let's get it started. Awesome. So the first thing we need to do in order to start creating uh, Glide apps is go to the Glide dashboard and click on New App. Let's give this app a name. Let's call it the Product Folks App. Uh, we can choose the primary device we want to use uh, our app on. Uh, let's choose Phone for now. And let's select the source of the data for our app. We can add light tables or other um, sources uh, when we create our app, but let's start with, uh, with Google Sheets. Awesome. So right now I created the app and let's select the data source that we are going to use. In this case is this spreadsheet that I already have created. It's called the Product, Works, uh, the Product Folks Workshop Demo App. Let's select this data source and let's wait a couple of minutes, of seconds actually. Okay, awesome. As you can see, Glide already created a structure for the app for me. So as you can see uh, right here, he, um, sorry, Glide created a tab, a different tab for each one of the tables or the sheets that I have on my file. So let's remove this and start actually from the scratch. Okay, awesome. Now, I one of my recommendations- so, Sebastian, I'm so sorry. So sorry for interrupting. If possible to go a little slow, I think a couple of members on the chat section oh, are requesting. Yes, yes. Of the course, problem. of course. Yeah, thanks so much. Of course, I get too excited when I teach this stuff, so yeah. No problem. But also, you're a pro, and lots of users here are probably using it for the first time. But thanks so much. Yeah, of course. Uh, do you want me to repeat uh, the whole process of creating an app, or do do you all, do you all like get it? Um, yeah, I'll be <clears throat> so far so good. Sorry. I think uh, yeah, I think we have a bunch of requests to actually repeat. So first, I think the issue was probably we didn't sign up for Glide. Uh, so the there's probably okay, a little time to go with that. Yeah, you're probably right. I was I was probably going to ask him to continue, but yeah, lots of folks, folks asking you to start again. I'm so sorry, Sebastian, but it'd be great if you could just take it from the top. That'll be awesome. Yes, yeah, no problem. Thanks. No problem at all. So yeah, uh, well, the first thing we need to do is go to glideapps.com and sign up in case you we don't have an account. Let's click on sign up. In this case, I already have um, an account but you will see a, a pop-up message asking for to sign up with Google or email. For this case, I will say it's okay uh, signing up with uh, Google because it will be faster to start creating this app, this, uh, your app right now for this workshop. So once the majority has their account, we can start moving forward with creating it. Maybe let's wait a couple of minutes until everyone's like sign up. Okay, seems like most of, of the audience is already set up. Okay, so right now, uh, if we sign up successfully, we are going to see the Glide dashboard. 
So in the Glide dashboard, let's click on the button that says new app right here and choose a name for our app. I will call this uh, the product folks demo app. We can choose the device that we want to use for this app or that we want to use primary for our app, but I will leave this as phone or mobile just for now. Let's click on continue and then select a source for our data that we are going to use in our app. Let's choose Google Sheets. Now, we'll see this message with all the Google Sheets that we have in our drive, uh, in our Google Drive. So let's click on the one that I share with you. Please uh, make a copy of the uh, sheet in order not to mess around with the data because maybe some of you can manipulate the data and like change uh, it for, for other people. So yeah, let's choose like that table right now and wait a couple of seconds. Awesome. As I mentioned before, Glide creates automatically a structure and a version of our app depending on the type of data that we have. So he, uh, Glide creates like each tab for each sheet that we have in our file. But I will remove those to start just from scratch. To remove those Sebastian, tabs, so sorry again. So sorry. Uh, a yeah. couple of them aren't able to access the uh, sheet. They don't have access to the sheet. Is it possible to make a, another copy of this? And then sure, I think lots of folks are on this. That's when. Yeah, I'm yeah. Gonna... Don't worry, folks. I think he's shared it again. Do check it now. Yeah, like Apurva shared, please do refresh the page. You should be able to access it now. Yeah, if you can. Yeah, it's working now. So do share it in the chat section if you're still facing an issue. And hope this gives everyone else a chance to catch up. Take these extra 30 wow. seconds to catch up. Please react. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sebastian, you might have to do another thing. If you can just take a copy of this sheet. I feel there are too many people on one sheet. So sometimes Google, yeah, if you can just make a copy. And folks, you all can probably make a copy of this sheet. Go to file and make a copy of this. You will not have as much track. Yeah, exactly. Sebastian showed it to you on the screen. Yeah, just yeah. Uh, read it. Awesome. Folks, can we continue? If you could just put a thumbs up if we see enough emojis. Awesome. Go for it, Sebastian. Yeah, yeah. Stay Thanks, folks. Uh, I just want to clarify that in case you want to learn more about uh, Glide or you want to catch up with uh, all the stuff that I'm talking right now, uh, you can go to our website and click on more. And here we have video guides and it, many tutorials of how to build an app from scratch, use cases, and more in-depth videos. So that's another thing you can uh, do later after this workshop. OK, so let's take it from where we leave it. Um, let's delete all the tables, all the tabs that were created for, uh, for this app to start really from scratch. Let's go to tabs here uh, on the left side and right click on each one of them and click on delete, just like that. Awesome. I will leave those two here because this is uh, these are those kind of tabs that Glide automatically creates and you can reuse whenever you want by just like hiding or showing this on your app. So, okay, the first thing I'll recommend you to do is to go to the data editor itself. It's by clicking this icon right here and we will check if our data is uh, set up correctly. Glide automatically detects what kind of data we have in each column, but sometimes it could make a mistake or we can change the, the way this works. 
uh, as we want. So let's check this out. Okay, session is like a text field, for example. Speaker is text. The photo of the session is a uh, image type column. The date and time is, is set correctly. Duration is correct and time is correct. Let's go with speakers as well. Venue, feedback, and users. So here, for example, let's change this to email. Oh, okay, it's already set as email. And yeah, looks like, seems like our data is, is correct. So we can start building our app. In order to do that, let's add a tab here. On the left side, let's click on the plus button and we will add a tab just like that. Now let's give this tab a name. I want to show all the available sessions on this conference or around this workshop or event. So I'm just gonna call these sessions. Okay, awesome. Now let's set the source of this tab and assign this to one of the tables that we have on our file. So right here in the data editor, I have one table with all the sessions and all the information about the sessions. So I'm going to select that table as a source of this session, of this tab, sorry. And let's choose a really cool icon here. Let's look for a calendar. Just like that. Sebastian, uh, maybe we can take yeah. a quick pause here. I think a couple of folks are catching up with you. So maybe just like a 10, 20 second pause and Maybe we'll just take a quick emoji check, as we call it, in 10 seconds. And if we get enough thumbs up, we can continue. Awesome. Yep. Yeah. People are already yeah. coming in. So we just wait for another 10 seconds. Sorry for the interruption for the rest of them. OK. Cool. Uh, cool. Like, um, everyone is OK? OK. Yep, please go ahead. No. Awesome. We already have a session step, so let's add a uh, speakers tab to show all the available speakers and information about them. Okay, so let's add another tab by clicking this plus button um, again. And let's change the name on the right side here. And let's call this speakers. Now, as I mentioned before, let's assign the source of the data to one of the tables that we have. And let's click on speakers because I have this speakers table with all the speakers information in rows. Awesome. Let's change this icon here. Let's look for people maybe. This looks great. And you will see here that you have this menu and you can change from the tabs that we created. We have one for sessions and one for speakers. Is everyone uh, got to this part? Okay, that's awesome. Thanks. Great. Let's go back to the session step. Now, this is when the cool part or the magic part happens. Now, as you can see here at the right side, we can change the style of this tab. So I would I would like to show all the sessions available by date in, in a calendar view. So I would select the calendar view. And just like that, the app changes and show us all of the sessions available in a calendar view. Now let's personalize and customize this. By To do that, let's click on edit list, this button right here. And we will see all the options available right now. Now, on the data uh, section of this menu, let's choose the title as the session name. The description we will assign the speaker to show the speaker of this session. The start time is the date and time. And because it's one day, a one day event, let's choose the end date as the same date as well. We can change 
uh, the default view of this uh, tab by clicking here. We can show the calendar view as default, or we can show this as a list of dates. Okay, awesome. Is everyone got to this part so far before moving forward? Okay, that's awesome. Great. Now, I will show you something really cool. So if you click on one of those uh, sections here, those are like basically one of, uh, of each rows that we have on our table. So if I click here, Glide automatically creates another screen with the details of that row for me, as you can see here. And on the left side, I can see all the components that are, are on this screen. So I will delete all of those just to show you how to build all of these from scratch. So to do that, let's click on this button right here. And let's add a title component, for example. Let's search for title. And let's set the title of this component as the name of the session. On the details, we, also, we will assign the date and time of the session. And for the image, let's add the photo of the session. We can personalize the way this looks, just like that by clicking those button, buttons. We can change the size as well. But leave this uh, like this. Is everyone OK to, uh, to this part? <clears throat> OK, awesome. Great. Now, let's see. Let's check our data first to see what else What can, can we add here. OK, we have duration. We have time already. We have the speaker and yeah, let's add the speaker and the duration of this. To add the duration, let's add a text field, a simple text field. And we can set the duration of that conference. Now, something I like to do is instead of adding just simple text, Let's add action text. An action text, text is a component that lets you uh, add text, but also lets you trigger actions when you click on it. So for example, I, add, I added like this action text component here, and I will set the title as the speaker and the data, um, I will pull that from the speaker column. Sebastian? Sorry, yeah. No, just want to take a quick check if everyone's been able to follow. And if not, if we can take a quick, I think um, lots of folks are doing it for the first time. I see a lot of thumbs up, so that's great. I think uh, a small minority are sitting and following my chat section instead, which I will stop now. But just taking a quick 30 second break for folks to pick up, and that's great. We can see a lot of thumbs up, so that was awesome. Uh, Manish, I'm sorry. <laughs> Please do catch up on the recording. We're seeing way more number of thumbs up on the. Okay, do you all want a quick, uh, Sebastian? Is anyone is anyone stuck at any step? Do we have any questions? Maybe we can just take that while we are. Um, Okay, that's awesome. Lots of folks saying that it's good till now. We're okay. probably at 50, 50, yeah. Just, I'll just wait for another 10, 20 seconds, if that is okay. Yeah, I think some of them are still catching up. Uh, for those who already done it so far, maybe just grab a quick cup of coffee and come back, or maybe it is dinner time in India. So yeah. there are some questions, yeah. Akash? I think there's one suggestion too. In case you're completely lost, or probably you joined a little late, yeah, you know, the YouTube live is on. Please feel free to rewind uh, and you, know, you can actually catch up with what Sebastian's saying. 
Okay, awesome. I think there is one interesting question in the chat, ladies. How did we create detailed screens? Okay, um, for detailed screens, Guy actually creates this automatically. In order to uh, enter to this detailed screen, just click on one of those items that we have on our app. Uh, you will go to that detail screen that we were talking about. This do it, uh, Glide do this, uh, does this automatically. So yeah, okay, awesome. Let's move forward. Now we added uh, the duration of this um, session, but now I would like to add the speaker. Before that, I would like to teach you something really, really useful and really important um, in Glide, that is relations. So let's go back to our presentation and I will teach you uh, real quick about relations. Now, relations are the way to connect the information of two tables. There are two types of relations, simple relations and multiple re relations. To explain this, I'll take a look uh, our, let's take a look at our app structure. So in a conference, in a event, you have, for example, uh, many speakers, and each speaker has could have many uh, or multiple sessions, but each session has only one speaker, or at least in the way this our app works for now. So a simple relation is, for example, for relating a session to its speaker, and a multiple relation is, for example, to use uh, to relate the speaker to multiple sessions. Sorry for the typo here. <laughs> now let's go back to our app and to use relations, let's go to the data editor right here. Now let's go to the sessions table and let's set a column right here. Click on the plus button at the end and let's search for the column type relation. Now, as the label, I will change the name and say this is the speaker of the session. And what we are going to do here is search for the speaker name that we have here because each session has its, its speaker, right? We're going to search all of those names in other table that is going to be the speakers table. So we are going to search for the speakers and we are going to match the values in the speakers tab or the speakers table and we'll choose the name. So we are going to do that match, right? We will leave this uh, unchecked because this is a simple relation. We don't want to uh, match with multiple um, with multiple records. So let's click done and that's how it's done. Um, I, this is really important. So I would like to uh, take a quick break here. It does everyone uh, understand how this works? Lots of thumbs up. We'll just wait for a second if we get any questions awesome. in the chat section. Perfect, awesome. Yeah. Looks like uh, it's all good. Can you do it one more time is what was us And what is the use of such relations? We have two questions. Yes, uh, I'm going to show right now uh, the use of, of relations and why it's important to use them. Let's wait for a couple of seconds until people catch up with the, the last things we did. Okay, seems like everyone is already there, right? Yeah, cool. Now let's do the same, but with the speakers table, okay? So a speaker could have multiple sessions. So in this case, I'm gonna create a multiple relation. Now to do that, let's click on the plus button at the end as well. Let's choose relation as the type of column. 
and set sessions of the speaker. Now, let's relate the name of the speaker and let's match the values in the sessions table, but in the speakers column. Now, since we have like different sessions and we have, for example, one uh, speaker that has multiple se uh, sessions or could have multiple sessions, I will set this as match multiple. So we'll have like all of the sessions of that speaker. And you, as you can see here, now we can preview, for example, this speaker has two sessions and is related to two records of the other table. Does everyone got it so far? Please let me know before I continue. Yeah, I think a couple of folks on the chat section will just wait for a second. Vinay, could you expand on that? What rule would you like to see? Excuse me. <laughs> I'm just asking. I think there was a chat. chat. Oh. Yeah, maybe Pavi, you can help that. Do you have a rule behind the relation that is created? Is there anything you can share around that? Uh, I'm basically just matching the speaker's name because that's the, the common denominator of these two tables. The sessions and the speaker has this uh, speaker's column with the same name. So I'm going to use that to match those and relate those tables. Got it. Um, I think all good so far. If, if, yeah, I don't see any other questions. Yep, a couple of thumbs up as well, please go ahead. Okay, cool. Yeah, in, in our tutorial series, there is a video explaining in more depth about relations. I don't have like um, too much time to explain in depth how relations work, but I think you can go through our documentation or the videos that Jack, my colleague, explained this so good. So in case you, you are kind of lost, you can find all of your answers there. But let's move forward with, uh, with this workshop. Okay, cool. Now, some somebody asked me about like, what's the use for relations? So that's what I'm gonna show you right now. So, for example, this is the details screen of the session, and I'm gonna, I want to show the speaker of this session. So, what I'm gonna do is like add a relations component. Let's search for relation like that. And Glide is going to pick the column that we created before automatically, but we can assign other ones if we have many. Let's click on the speaker of the session. And let's set the title as the name of the speaker. What this does is pulling all of the information of the other table, that is the speaker's table. So it, this is going to show us, for example, right now, right here on the sessions, we have like this speaker column, right? It's just the name of the speaker. We don't have any further information about the speaker. But with relations, what we are doing is pulling all of the information of this speaker from this other table right here that has a photo, a company, a bio, and much, much more information. This is really handy to do this kind of, of things. So we can even like move this up here. And if you now let's check this something really cool. If you clicked on this component, Glide automatically shows you all the information about and shows you another detail screen with all the information about this um, speaker in this case. Yeah, I think we'll take a pause here. Folks, do yeah. add a thumbs up on the emoji screen as soon as you finish till here. Awesome, there are lots of them. Open. Okay, that's great, that's great, that's great. Navil Avinash, thanks for answering those in the chat section. I hope you're able to build the app side by side as well. 
Okay. Aisha okay. asks, is this publishable to the App Store directly from Glen? Uh, no, uh, I just, uh, uh, you cannot publish uh, Glen apps on Google app on the Google Play Store or the App Store. Uh, Google app, uh, sorry, Glen apps live on the web. They are progressive web apps, kind of. And you can share those with just one click and share it by sharing a link. So anyone with a link can click on it and will access your app. I'm just gonna show you at the end when we finish our app, yeah. we are going to publish it and we can see how it looks like in real life. Super, super, that's awesome. Uh, if no more questions, we can go ahead now. Great. So let's add uh, a little bit to make it more cool. Let's add a separator here, for example. And let, let's move this around just to improve the way this looks. Let's set the space as medium. And for example, let's add a comment section. We would like to use this comment on how they, how they think or what they think uh, about uh, the session, for example, of this. Let's search for the comments component. And just like that, you can add components. Every user will are going to be able to add comments of any part of your app. So it's just that easy. Now let's duplicate this separator to make this look even better. And that's that's great. Okay, awesome. Now let's go back to the speaker step that we created before. If everyone uh, is okay with that. Okay, awesome. Now let's change the way this looks, shall we? Um, let's choose the tiles style for the screen. And let's click on edit list to customize this. The title, for the title, I want to show the name of the speaker. And for the details, I just want to show the company. Okay, set the image as the photo of the speaker. And now I'm just gonna tweak a little bit the design. Let's choose this as a circle design instead of as rectangle. And let's say at tiles per row, I will set this as two tiles per row. We can change the orientation from landscape, for example, Oy, sorry, to vertical. The crop behavior is just to accommodate the image inside each tile. Since those are faces, I would like to choose faces in order to center the image and to detect the faces and make them look great. And yeah, just like that, we already have our speaker tab. Is everyone okay so far? Quick emoji check. Lots of thumbs up. That's awesome. Um, anyone, any that. questions? Yep. No, that's awesome for everyone who has been able to follow so far. I'm super excited to see your builds. And uh, thank you for stepping up on the chat section and clearing doubts. No questions so far, so I think we're good to go. We'll wait for another five, 10 seconds, just in case. And yep, we're good. Sebastian, I think we can go ahead. Okay, awesome. Yeah, so the same way we did with um, the sessions tab, if we click on each speaker, we'll see a details screen automatically created for us. Now, since we understand how to add components, I'm just gonna tweak this to make this look great. Now let's select this component by clicking here, or we can use the selector tool at the bottom. Like here, we can click on select mode and we can select those components. If we change to play mode, we can interact with our app. That's the main difference in case uh, I didn't explain this before, I think. Okay, now let's tweak this a little bit. Let's click on the component and on the right side, it seems like everything is set up, set up correctly and just change the way this looks as, make this up like a profile. 
thing. Now, here on the sessions, we have our sessions, right? And the speaker. Now, I would like to show on the speaker tab all the sessions that this, this speaker is hosting, right? So in order to do that, let's create not a relation, but a list. Let's add an inline list because there is a list of sessions that we want to show. Let's click on inline list and let's choose as the source of the values, the multiple relation column that we created before. That is this one, sessions of the speaker. Let's set the title as the session's name. For the details, I want to show the date and time for this and maybe the duration as well. As you can see, uh, all the information is getting updated automatically. Now let's change the way this looks and let's set this as maybe cards to make this look even better. Now let's set the style for these cards as horizontal and make it like smaller maybe. Let's change the way this looks as well. You can change this the way you want. You can you not do not need to follow me right now because you can customize this part of your app the way you want. So I'm just gonna click this real quick. But you can work around, play around, sorry, um, these features to make the make your app uh, look the way you want. So yeah, let's choose a name for this. Let's uh, say these are just sessions. Let's change the title. And finally, let's add a separator to increase the space between like those components, just like that. Is everyone okay so far? Yeah, okay. if you can just show how you added the search section again, I think that'll be awesome. Uh, the section, the part of the sessions. Uh, yeah, let's search for on the components picker on this button here, let's look for inline list because we want to show a list of items, a list of things, and what we are showing here is a list of sessions using the relations column that we created before. Okay, cool. I think someone is asking, um, how do I add this search field here? Okay, this is this is actually one of the cool things about Glide is that Glide does this automatically. Glide create this search field for you so we can uh, search for values, for example, and it works automatically. We don't need to worry about adding search fields or parameters or yeah, that stuff. Okay, cool. Now, let me show you something really great. We have here this, the list of the sessions of the speaker. And if we click on that session, it will take us to the details screen that we created before for each session, just like that. Now, we already have our app created with uh, the sessions and the speakers. Now, I would like to tweak this, the, the overall design a little bit more. To do that, I will go to settings right here at the top of the builder. And we can change the accent color. Let's choose like the yellow one. And we can change the theme. We can make it dark mode. Oh, we can make it bold. We can even uh, select this checkbox in order to match the theme of each device. So it, the theme is going to change automatically. We can even change the typography here, for example. Let's make this right here. If we go to the app info, we can change the icon of our app. For example, let's select 
this. Get a description. Let's make a brief pause here. Is everyone okay so far? Good, awesome. You guys are the best. Now, here we can choose if we want to let uh, our app shows on tablet mode or desktop mode. This is basically for a pro plan subscription. So I will skip this. And one thing that is really important I would like to talk about is privacy. Now, you all have control of your own data. Clyde has not access to your data and you can control who has access and who's not. So in order to do that, you can change the privacy settings. Now, right now my app is public. So anyone with the link of my app could have access and, could, and can um, edit information, view the, the data and so on. So I can change that to make this uh, as a private app and limit the access by password or by emails, or an email list. Uh, we can hide maybe uh, admit, like other features about privacy, like hiding the user's emails and so on. But just for this case, I'm just gonna set my app as public, but with email to let users sign up with their emails, just like that. And we can allow them to sign up, sign in with Google as well. Now let's move on and let's go to the sign-in screen. Since I selected public with email to allow users to sign in with their emails, I can tweak the sign-in um, screen right here. We can change the welcome message. For example, welcome to just like that. We can change the theme if we want as well. Is that easy? Okay, so we want to allow users to sign up. So the last thing we need to do right now is select uh, where are those users going to go and where all the data of those users are going to be stored. So to do that, let's check, let's click, sorry, on this burger menu here and let's click on this icon. Now, on the right side, we are going to see the source of our users profiles and where do we want to store all of the emails that are going to come uh, into our app. So let's select the users sheet that I have here with email name and last name photo information. And let's double check if all the data is set up correctly. For example, names with name email with email and image with photo. That is great. So now every time a user signs up or signs in, their email is going to be stored on this table right here. I will have the list of all those emails. And that's it. We already have our app created. We have like sessions and we have speakers. We have the information about like the sessions. We have the information about speakers now it's time to set our app public and share with uh whatever we want to do that let's uh press on the button here that says publish just like that then publish app and that's it it's that easy we can change even the the link and the subdomain of our app, we can say, for example, this is the product folks demo app. Sorry about that. And that's it. You can copy this link or you can scan this QR code and that's it. So let's test this out. Let's copy the link and open this on the browser to see how our app looks like. Awesome. We already have our app. We can sign in, sign up. Uh, let's add my email, for example. 
if I add my email instead of signing up with Google, I will receive a code in my email. So I will pop up my email real quick to copy that code. I'm just waiting for, for the code. Just give me a second to, just to show you how this is to. OK, great. I have the code on my email on the sign in. And that's it. We can share this with our friends, with our colleagues, and we can start reading our apps. Now, the thing is that our app and our data source, our sheets, is always stay in sync, so no matter if we change the, the information, the, our app always stays up to date. So yeah, uh, that's it uh, for now. Uh, that was uh, how to build an app um, from scratch. So we can jump on the Q&A uh, part of the, the workshop. Anyone wow, that was, that was awesome, Sebastian. I think just live for everyone to just see it, you do it. Some of them, lots of them could catch up, some of them couldn't, but for everyone who couldn't do check out, we'll keep the video live on YouTube. Uh, to you know, go through it again. You can pause at the steps where you missed it. Uh, anyone has any questions? Anyone stuck particularly for this demo? Then we'll take up the rest from the Q and A tab. But anyone has any questions on this particular? Um... Okay, no questions so far. We'll wait for a minute. If you have anyone stuck, I think lots of y'all have done it. I can see the emojis. Do add your uh, links to the chat section or on Twitter or LinkedIn and tag us. But if you have any questions, I think there's some question around Google sign in and if they can customize it on the landing, on the on the sign in page. Can they customize the logo, et cetera, on the sign in page? I'm sorry. I, 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 can, can they? customize if they can add a logo to the sign in page on the home page as they click the app. Is that customizable? Yes, yes. of course. Let me show you real quick how to do that. Sai asks, what is the best glide app you've seen someone build? Uh, well, there are actually a ton of apps. Yeah, I yeah. <laughs> Yeah, one of my favorite use cases actually was uh, from this company that uh, is a video producer company that um, they made these scouting sessions for looking for recording locations and so on. So they made this app, this really useful app to like store all the information about those locations and share it, uh, between the, the, the team and all this that, that stuff. I have never thought about it and it was a pretty good example of how to use Glide in your company to improve uh process uh, or something like that. So I really, really like that one. So yeah. Um, about the question about how to uh, add your logo on the sign-in screen. If you go to the sign-in screen, if you have a pro plan of one of our apps, you can customize the background and add your own logo here. Uh, you can upload and it will show automatically right there. You can control like the, the size, and the orientation and yeah just like that sebastian uh, the domain name is not customizable on the free version right yes, yes. you can uh, connect your own domain but only if you have a, a pro plan pro plan exactly uh, you have to check it out a couple of interesting apps on the chat section that's come up uh, with that, I think Sebastian, many of them have already done it. So we should be able to see that. To reiterate folks, any idea, not a problem. Three days from now, we did announce the winner of the previous giveaway at the, at the beginning of this session. But we also have one more LinkedIn premium to give away. So in case you have any ideas that you feel now that you can build, now you can pause the video, you can watch it on YouTube. And in three days, if you could post it on your social platform, LinkedIn or Twitter with the hashtags that we have at the highest number on polls. Do tag Glide as well as the product folks and we'll choose a winner who will get a LinkedIn premium account from our side. And with that, let's move to the next section, folks. If you don't have any more questions on this, let's move to the question and answers. Uh, Sajal has also shared a quick feedback form here. If you did enjoy the session 
do give Sebastian and the product folks a shout out on social. If you did learn something new, do add it to the feedback session. We're also checking out um, what are some other tools that you'd like to do workshops on, hands-on workshops. And you'll have recordings to this so that you can go back and learn. But uh, do let us know on the feedback form. And let's get to the Q&A. Sebastian, we'll take a 10-minute Q&A. I think we are right on the dot for our 90-minute session. Uh, folks, if you could help me upload these, I think Akash and me will take one question each, at least. Yep. And, uh, Absolutely. Akash, I guess and you want to Yeah, go for it. Yeah, so as I mean, as we are waiting for the upwards, uh, maybe just as an extension of uh, from where we left off, right? Uh, the question was in scalability as such. Uh, Sebastian, just wanted to know from you as to you know what might be some uh, large companies that are using Glide, something that you know folks can refer to publicly. I, I know that you know the marketplace, you can see the apps, but some uh, references that you can give some large companies just to share how scalable Glide is as such. Yeah, of course. For example, um, we have a video about Sarin Energy, one of our customers that uh, sells uh, LED lights, I think, uh, if that's correct. Okay. Um, so they have built like two apps, one for tracking their inventory. So they like use Glide for track the entire inventory. They're a large company. They are, are really uh, huge in, in, in the US, like uh, in that industry. And they use Glide to track because they used to track all the inventory in the spreadsheets, but that wasn't like super handy when they were in the warehouse and they wanted to check real quick about the, the, the stock of one item. So they use like Glide for visualizing all that information. And I think that is, that is a great example of how so you can learn more about Glide stories in, in our YouTube channel. So, yep. Check that. I'll check that. Thank you. Thanks, Akash. Akash, do you have any, before I jump into the next question, are there any questions on your mind? Anything that you'd like to ask, Sebastian? No, I, I think a bunch of questions Sebastian already answered as such. Um, uh, so, yeah, that's one part. But probably just wanted to, uh, if you can emphasize a little more, you mentioned that, you know, you're not, you're not trying to replace uh, the traditional way of building software uh, through code, but just wanted it to uh, understand where the line, you know, is there a line, uh, definitive line where, you know, you can use Clyde for and something that you probably uh, need to essentially program? Yes, uh, I think the last part of the question, like, I missed, I missed that one, my connection, like, yeah, was, Akash, if you could could you yep. repeat that again, please? Yeah, sorry for that, Sebastian. I was wondering, uh, I hope you can hear me now, though, everybody. Yeah, yeah, of course. Perfect. No, I was just wondering, you mentioned that, uh, you know, uh, you're not trying to replace the traditional way of building software. So just wanted to know if there is a line that you recommend that, you know, this is what you should be using Clyde for. And beyond that, it's important to properly use programming itself. So just wanted to know if there is a recommendation. Yes, of course. So let's say, for example, in a company, you could have like uh, your developer team that or your IT team that is going to develop like this the software that you'll need to run your business, right? But there are other teams like marketing teams, operational teams, like that need, will need like maybe uh, technological solutions for optimizing their internal processes. But maybe the IT team doesn't have the capacity to build that amount of software the amount of custom software. So with Glide, those teams can build by themselves the solutions that they need according to their necessities. So that's a good example of how to use Glide uh, along with uh, with custom software or traditional development. So we don't try to replace uh, traditional coding. We are actually inspired by, by, by coding, we're inspired by data. And we would like to make it easier for everyone to create a beautiful software. So that's our mission, that's our goal, and that's what we want to do. That's great. That's great to know. Perfect. So as we have about five minutes, I think we can pick a couple of audience questions and close this. Yep, yep, yep. absolutely. I'll pick the next one, which is most supported right now. And folks will also added a link to the chat section, which is another 
session that we have tomorrow. If you're interested, do sign up for that. Second is we have a private channel for no code specifically. We're going to be doing more workshops, which Sajal will be adding to the chat section. So if you want to be a part of that, do join that. And on to the next question. Uh, Sukrit asks, is there a way to integrate analytics tools to track user actions? I don't know. I think you'll have Google Analytics, but if you'd like to throw light on that. Yes, uh, you can actually track um, actions within your app if you mean like, uh, yeah, well, let's let's break this question into, into parts, right? Um, the first one is like, you can connect your app with Google Analytics. So you can have more information about like, uh, the location of your users, I mean, demographically, um, geographically, I mean, um, you can know more about like the, the usage of your app, how many users, active users do you have, and all that information that Google Analytics, Analytics uh, provides to you. And the second part is that if you want more custom like um, analytics of or a way to know about the interaction of your app, I don't, I don't know, maybe like the couple, uh, how many clicks a button has, you can build that by yourself using actions or, or that. You can take a look at the tutorial videos that we have on, on our YouTube channel, or you can ask in our community. Our community is a good uh, place to go and ask for those questions. I think there are like a couple of experts that have built like the way, a way to um, add analytics into your app such in such a detail to know how many clicks a button has. And so yeah, that would be a good reference in order to do that. But yeah, of course you can do that. Awesome, thanks for that. Akash, we'll just take one more. And if anyone's catching this on YouTube, do add Sebastian OP to the chat section and drop your questions. We'll take one from that. Um, Garima asks us, can you please elaborate on the features of free versus pro versus premium? Is there anything specific? Also, I think another question is around what is the similar one which I asked you around the best app that you've seen. So if you do have any links handy, do add it to the chat section. But yeah, how do you see the versions of um, features that are available on Glide? And if they aren't available, are there any other alternative apps you suggest? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, right now, we have for three main plans for this uh, for everyone available that are basically the free plan, the pro app plan, and the private pro app plan. Um, the main difference is that the personal uh, app or free plan is basically to start um, getting used to Glide, like learn about its, its features. That's uh, a small app and has like row and uh, storage limited limitations. Also has like, for example, you can change the the domain, you can change uh, the way the sign up, the signing screen looks like. And there are like many other uh, features such as barcode scanning, um, sign up pads, and those features that are not available um, entirely on the free plan. So yeah, uh, talking about like the paid plans, we have two right now that are like pro, uh, the pro app plan and the private pro app that the main difference is that the public uh, or pro app is basically a public app that is uh, available for everyone. And you can control who has access to which data or to what part of your app. With private pro, you can have or limit the access by password or by a list of emails. Are those, that is made for businesses uh, or companies or people who wants to protect their, or have, has, have more control about the access of, of their apps so that's one of the, the main differences um, and i think you can look um take a look at all of the others like um difference and features that every plan has on our pricing page on the marketing website awesome thanks for that um with that i think we have a bunch of other questions um, but I don't see too many reports on that. So we're right on the dot, I think. Yeah, we're right on the dot. Maybe we can take these questions offline or on the Twitter thread. So folks do add up to the same thread that we have live right now. Sebastian will pick it up from there whenever he gets some time. Um, 
over to you akash i think uh, fantastic session sebastian thank you so much for this uh, lots of folks on the chat section uh, thanking you for this so um, thank you thank great, you. great yeah great great learning session and uh, akash over to you too and this is yeah yeah first of all thank you so much sebastian um, i know that you know uh, it was a very short time but when we converse and you know decided to actually get have this uh, presentation so thank you so much for that um and uh, yeah apart from this uh, for everybody out there uh, just like how sebastian uh, gave i mean walked us through glide and also uh, helped us with the hands on workshop we also have uh, a few more tools uh, on the way where you would be uh, you know building along and seeing the power of no code assets so stay tuned for that and uh, yeah please go back to the youtube channel in case you know you didn't join you couldn't join on time and uh, you can see sebastian explaining how you can actually build the conference app as such right and uh, yeah three days time and uh, we're, we're looking forward to all the exciting and innovative ideas that you have thank you thanks so much yeah thanks so much sebastian again awesome so folks hope you enjoyed the session to everyone who joined us from the insojo very very quick uh, updates on that hope the assignments are going great uh, we're probably halfway through it we have like the best of the session to remaining for the next half so they stay tuned to that if you have any questions on the assignment we have our officer this sunday do join in clear that out uh, we are no clock twist on this there is no other assignment coming in per se but um, if you weren't able to catch up we will have this recording on youtube uh, build out something this weekend and post it out on on your social channel will give you more confidence as you go in and you will also learn the hands on as well right so the prd continues as is but uh, very very simple you saw how we built out this end to end in an in an hour you probably have three days to take out ideas you know lots of ideas that you might have uh, it needn't be what you're building on the pr it can be something very different uh, doesn't have to be complex just put it out there um, and the incentive is just um, the linkedin premium is just an incentive to that's just something on top but the primary reason is do go out there learn and learn by doing right so that is number one um, thanks so much folks so we have a feedback form we've shared if you could just help us understand what are some other tools you'd like to learn right that would that would be amazing planning to do three more during this entire session so you have your live learning session and these are the hands on um, workshops that we think you might enjoy um, apart from that we do have a session tomorrow i think shalini shared a link do sign up to that that is a little technical so um, non tech folks don't get worried uh, but i'm sure the technical folks will enjoy this um apart from that yes do stay tuned uh, to some interesting announcements coming in next week uh, we'll see you soon akash any parting thoughts that you'd like to add no hashtag glide with dps that's the hashtag just wanted to add that awesome thanks so much for joining in folks enjoy your weekend and uh, shout out to um, akash kavir sajal asta and the entire team for making this yeah. happen yeah. um sorry if i missed someone <laughs> that's the reason i generally don't do this but a huge shout out for making this happen and sebastian thanks once again you have a great day too we'll see you soon yeah thank you so much thanks thanks team thanks everybody you soon